Okay, excellent. Hey, um, really appreciate you guys uh, having us on. Um, as was mentioned uh, on Twitter, they they were very kind to let us jump in very last minute with uh, with a quick lightning talk. So this will be uh, fairly brief, but um, really excited to to kind of uh, share some of this stuff we've been working on um, here over at Recon. Um, so the uh, the the larger talk that we uh, we're currently writing is called Breaches Be Crazy. Uh, it'll be a much more deeper dive on some of the topics we're going to very briefly touch on in this talk. Um, but let's uh, go ahead and dive into it. Um, so real quick introductions. So um, my name is Eric Capuano. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Recon InfoSec. Um, I also uh, teach for SANS in the DFER curriculum and formerly with the United States Air Force and Texas Air National Guard, as well as the Texas Department of Public Safety. Um, and in all of those roles, uh, fairly heavily involved in you know security operations, incident response, um, uh, continuous monitoring and, and things of that nature. Uh, and then, of course, there's a Twitter handle there at the bottom. And uh, I'll let Wint uh, Whitney introduce herself. Hey, uh, I'm Whitney Champion. I work with Eric over at Recon InfoSec. Been there for a few years now with him as the co-founder and lead architect. Awesome. So uh, let's just go ahead and dive right into kind of what Recon is and what we're about. That will help kind of segue into to how we use uh, Velociraptor and Time Sketch the way that we do. So. Um, Primarily, we are a managed detection and response uh, provider, an MDR. Um, some folks also kind of refer to that as an MSSP. You know, there's different names for it, but ultimately, we are a SOC for organizations that um, are large enough to need a security operations center, but not large enough to have their own, right? So effectively, uh, they outsource that uh, function to us. Um, we also uh, are practitioners in incident response. Uh, we've been actually very busy here recently with the uh, the exchange uh, situation that's been unfolding. So that's actually been interesting enough. Um, part of what's helped us uh, drive our automation using TimeSketch in uh, Velociraptor. Uh, and then we also do provide network defense range training. So we train practitioners around the world to do this line of work, whether it's more of a SOC monitoring type role or a hands-on systems uh, incident response type um, activity. But let's get right into the the, the meat of this uh, this lightning talk. So, um, like many of the other folks that uh, have talked about their use case for time sketch, ours is exactly the same. Um, we needed something that would allow several different remotely distributed incident responders to be able to collaborate on an incident to to build massive timelines across many different systems in a client environment, right? So, if there's a breach that involves 15, 16, 70, however many systems. We needed to very quickly be able to triage all those machines, right? And as most of you know, the days of, say, pulling full disk images are kind of you know, behind us when you're dealing with that many systems inside of a breach, uh, in the context of a breach. And so we needed to be able to quickly uh, perform that triage and build timelines and then analyze them in a collaborative way. So time sketch was hands down the best solution we've yet to find for the collaborative analysis portion, right? But you still have to solve the problem of how do you get all of that data into time sketch in a quick, uh, in a quick way. Um, and so we've had a few different techniques that we've used over the years, but one of the most recent and hands down our favorite one to date would be Velociraptor. So if it's uh, something that you're not familiar with, I highly recommend checking out Velociraptor. Um, it's a project that was created by Mike Cohen. Um, uh, you can go and check out his website at Velocidex. Dot com. But effectively, Velociraptor is a very lightweight agent that runs on the endpoint that allows us to do anything under the sun from running arbitrary PowerShell, but more importantly, to performing um, forensically sound triage acquisition. So um, one of the things I love about Velociraptor is that it natively understands the CAPE collection targets. So if you're familiar with CAPE, uh, which is also another phenomenal triage acquisition tool, uh, Velociraptor can read the same type of target files that CAPE uses. So it has the benefit of all the CAPE files, the knowledge of where all these different artifacts are located, to very quickly gather them all up and securely send them up to a central point, the Velociraptor server. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of just touch on that piece for just a moment. You know, effectively, we're using Velociraptor as our acquisition agent. Um, so it's able to pull everything from registry hives to event logs, prefetch files, you name it, um, and zip it all up, ship it up to a Velociraptor server, which is fairly neat, right? I mean, that's, that's pretty great. Um, it's a really good capability to have. But where the magic really comes into play is what Whitney has built for us 
in order to automatically ingest all of that data into time sketch. I'll let Whitney go ahead and talk about what she's done there. So as Eric mentioned, we've got all these uh, key acquisitions that have been um, taken by Velociraptor and we now need to have a way to get them into time sketch and that there's a lot of moving parts there. So we've essentially worked with Mike Cohen to build the missing piece of our pipeline here. Um, we've got a um, we've, we've got a time sketch instance up which is has a service that is running as a job that watches an S3 bucket. Um, that S3 bucket is going to have all of those zips from all of our collections that are going to get pumped into time sketch. Well, it can't just take a zip. It's got to have all the files that are in there and, and be able to run log a timeline and piece sort and get that all in time sketch. So essentially that job is watching that S3 bucket for all those zips that are getting dumped in there. Um, it's going to unzip that, find the collections that, um, that Velociraptor has created. It will run those through log to timeline, run those through PSORT, and then put them right into a sketch uh, for our analysts to view. So the missing link that we were um, that we needed was from getting it from Velociraptor into S3 to enable us to pump that into time sketch. So what we've done is we've worked with Mike Cohen, the creator of Velociraptor, to generate an artifact that will essentially take any collection that we run. Um, any any Cape triage collection that we run, take that zip file that it's generated, and in addition to saving it to our Velociraptor server, it will also pump that zip straight into that S3 bucket that our time sketch is sitting there waiting for, um, and uh, just basically automate automate the entire process. So if we kick off um, a hunt in Velociraptor to say run a Cape triage against 10 hosts, 50 hosts, whatever. Um, that artifact will be sitting in Velociraptor as a server-side artifact waiting for all those Cape collections to finish. It'll zip them up, compress them, um, drop those in S3. Our time sketch uh, instance will have that job running that says, hey, here's a new zip file. I'm going to unzip it and I'm going to start pumping those into time sketch so we'll have a, a complete timeline when that's all set. Um, Eric, can you hop over to the next slide? So this is just a snippet of the artifact, and uh, this will be on GitHub uh, within uh, probably sometime this week. I'm not sure of the exact timeline. But um, Mike Cohen uh, worked with us to create uh, this artifact that will run server-side, as I mentioned, within Velociraptor uh, to basically sit and watch for any uh, collections with the artifact name that you choose. In our instance, it'll be all of the Cape collections, and it will take all those finished collections, zip them up, and, and shift them off to S3 for us to pump into time sketch. Awesome. So again, that was a very brief talk, as uh, was, was asked of us for the lightning portion. So um, of course, we're happy to open it up for any questions that you folks have. Um, and I'll even preemptively sort of answer um, sort of a, a theme that I'm seeing in the chat um, about our choice of Velociraptor when there's many other really awesome triage acquisition tools. Um, one of the specific reasons that we use Velociraptor is because um, it's a multi-purpose tool for us because of its client server sort of um, uh, architecture. Um, we already have it deployed across all of our monitor endpoints and we're using it for periodic threat hunting, um, anytime we need to put hands on a system to pull back uh, you know, samples and things of that nature. So it's already there, it's already in place. And the scalability of Velociraptor is unthinkable. Um, I think with a, a very, very small Velociraptor deployment, uh, meaning like a couple of cores and like four gigs of RAM, you can onboard something in the ballpark of I think 10, 20, 30,000 endpoints. Um, so it's a very, very scalable solution as well. And um, the way that the tagging system works against clients in a Velociraptor installation, all I have to do to perform a triage acquisition on whether it's one system or a thousand is simply set a tag on that system. You know, whether that tag is compromised or IR or what have you, a hunt would automatically kick off to go ahead and perform the triage acquisition across all of those systems. And all I have to do is sit back and wait. And you know, in some matter of minutes or hours, there will be that many timelines waiting for me in time sketch. So it's a it's a fairly uh, scalable and, and robust solution. We're we're super proud of it. 
Um, also, a, a link on here if anybody wants to check out some of our other work, uh, please be sure to check out our, our website and our blog as well. Uh, cool. Melinda, your question, what about GUR? Um, yeah, what about GUR? So GUR is fantastic. Matter of fact, if you've, if you've used GUR, you would probably see a lot of similarities uh, between GUR and Velocidex. Um, I wouldn't, I'm not gonna say that one is better than the other. I would say they both have some very powerful capabilities. Um, the one advantage that I'm gonna give the Veloc Velociraptor here is, in my opinion, is, is substantially easier to deploy and to use uh, Velociraptor. Um, literally, the server and the client are the exact same binary just with different configuration files. So, I mean, it, it, the, the, the barrier to entry to get Velociraptor up and running and using it is a, a lot lower than it is for GUR. But I'm not gonna say one tool is better than the other. It's obviously um, you know, a, a preference, I think, at that point. But yeah, GUR is also another phenomenal um, example of a client-server type um, uh, hunt tool with uh, triage acquisition capability. Cool. Uh, I think there was just another question uh, yeah. about Redisir Raptor. Is it possible to deploy it quickly during the response? As a Matter of fact, I'll, I'll, I'll brag a little bit on our process that we've developed internally. Um, so we have a Velociraptor binary that's ready to go at any point in time that is pre-compiled with the configuration um, for you know a non-customer. So for instance, a, a brand new, uh, customer approaches us specifically with IR in mind, um, then we give them this, this custom built Velociraptor binary that we have digitally signed. We hand that over to them. All they have to do is run it. It checks in with our server. The configuration that it's carrying with it already knows that we need to go ahead and automatically uh, kick off triage acquisition. So literally by the time the customer has run the payload, the acquisition has already begun. Uh, you know, we get a web hook in Slack that says we've got a, a timeline waiting on us to analyze. So it's incredibly easy as a consultant. That's one of the primary reasons we adopted it because of the built-in transport. The moment you run the Velociraptor inst installer, it installs that service, it connects to the, to the uh, Velociraptor server and then starts transmitting the information that, that you've told it to. So yeah, it's incredibly easy.